Part I asked was to factorise. Now normally when we factorise, it means putting something into a bracket. But we've got three terms this time. We've got x squared minus 4x minus 21. And when we've got three terms, we need to have two brackets. So the first thing I'm going to do is write down my brackets. Now, I'm hoping that I'm mindful of you. We're doing soil. We've got to multiply out the brackets. But we're doing the opposite, so we're working backwards. We've got to work out what was in the bracket. So at the start, we've got x squared. How do I get x squared? x times x. So I need an x in each bracket. Now, I'm going to show you the method I used to find out those missing numbers. So I set up a little table and my numbers need to multiply to make the number on the end, which is, what's the number on the end? So 21 minus 21. And they've got to add together to make the number in the middle, which is minus 4. Can anybody give me a pair of numbers that multiply together to make 21? 7 and 3. How can I make minus 4 from 7 and 3? What signs do they need to have? You need to make minus 4 from 7 and 3. Yep, yeah, 3 minus 7. So a positive 3 and a negative 7. And then you just put those in your brackets. Negative 7, positive 3. It doesn't matter which way round they are. But we're not finished yet, because it says, and hence solve. Hence means you need to use what you've just found. All right, so we've just found out that those brackets equal 0. Now, for that to equal 0, one of those brackets must be 0. Okay, you really type up anything by zero, you get zero. So either x minus seven equals zero, or x plus three equals zero. Now I need x on its own. If I've got x minus seven equals zero, then x must be seven. Or if I take the plus three over, it becomes minus three. X equals minus 3. Okay, so once you've done your brackets, then if it asks you to solve it, put each bracket equal to 0 and you find your x value. Now the next one is an algebraic equation and it wants us to solve it. Have you got that? So we've got x minus 7 over 4 plus 2x plus 5 over 8 equals a half. Now at the moment I can't really do anything with those fractions. What do fractions need to have? The same bottom. So I'm going to make this. What am I going to make it? 8. How do I turn 4 into 8? Double everything. So double the top, double the bottom. So I've got 2x minus 14 over 8 plus 2x plus 5 over 8, because that's already over 8. And I'm going to leave this one as a half. What can we do now that we've got the same bottom on the fraction? We can put them together. So we've got 2x minus 14 plus 2x plus 5 all over 8. And that equals a half. Now we're looking to get x equals, right? That's the plan. Where do you want to go? What do you want to do first? Take the 8 over. The 8 is currently divided. If I take it to the other side, what will I do? Tights. So I'll be left with 2x minus 14 plus 2x plus 5 equals a half times 8. What can I do to this side at the moment where I've got all these x's and these numbers? What can I do? Put them together. So I've got 2x plus 2x which gives me 4x 
I've got minus 14 plus 5. Minus 14 plus 5. Remember the sign of the one in front. Minus 14 plus 5 is minus 9. And on the other side, if I work out the half times out of my calculator, I am going to get 4. What's got to be x on its own? The minus 9. If I take the other side, what do I need to do with x? Plus 9. Brilliant. 4x equals 4 plus 9. 4x equals 13. And I still have my x on its own. What's got to be? times by 4, when I take the other side, it's going to do the opposite, which is divide. x equals 13 over 4. Now you can either leave it as 13 over 4, or you can work it out as a calculator paper. You get full marks for either. 